And the time is here. We're about to get on a Cisco router for the first time, see a command or two, and definitely a routing table or two, as we do a walkthrough actually with two networks, one a little more basic than the other. We'll start with that one. And we're going to follow that decision-making process, first from the point of view of the host and then the router. There is a slight change to the IP config output from the end of the last video that I showed you. I'm going with an IP version 4 address of 192.168.1.100 and that doesn't impact the gateway at all, doesn't impact anything really. I uh, just wanted to change that last octet so it matched up with our diagrams, which is always a helpful thing. So we've got a slash 24 subnet mask, we've got a default gateway of 192.168.1.1. Let's see all of this in action. First from the point of view of the host. Now when the host sends a packet, there are two possibilities regarding the destination host. It's either on the same subnet as that packet source, or it's not. Not to be a smart aleck, but those are the only two choices. It's either on the same subnet or it's not. And that does impact how the packet is handled. Because if a host is sending packets to a destination IP address that's on the same subnet, there's really no routing involved. And what's going to happen is, in effect, the packets in this network are going to go straight from 192.168.1.100 straight to 192.168.115. We know they're on the 192.168.10 slash 24 subnet, both of them. So if host and destination, excuse me, source and destination are on the same subnet, there's really no routing involved. And again, in effect, the packets are going to go straight to the host. Of course, that's not always going to be the case because here what we've got is a host at 192.168.1100 sending packets to 10.1.1.5, host C over there, on the other side of the router. And when you see a host on one side of the router, so to speak, off one interface, the other host is off the other side, you can be assured there's going to be some kind of routing that has to get involved. Because host A is looking at this and saying, you know, packets for 10.1.1.5, I don't know where to send those. So what the host does in that situation is send the packets to its default gateway, which we saw in the IP config output was 192.168.1.1, which happens to be the fast Ethernet interface that's on that side of the router facing that particular host. That's what you would want the default gateway to be, is that router interface, that router IP address, because what the host in that situation is saying is, I don't have the faintest idea what to do with these packets, so I'm just going to send them to my default gateway and hope my default gateway can figure it out. So the packets are going to go through the switch, going to arrive at the router, and you can see the IP addresses here. You might want to write those down or pause the video to jot this whole diagram down because I'm going to bring the live equipment up or uh, the router in a moment. And I've already configured those IP addresses on there. We will configure plenty of IP addresses later, but I already have those on here because I want to show you what a routing table code, excuse me, routing table looks like along with the codes as well. So let's go ahead and call that up. And here is our Cisco router, hopefully handily named Router 1, or R1 in this case. And I'm going to show you the first routing table that we've taken a look at. And this is going to be every IP route the router knows about. Simply show IP route. And first off, do not panic or get intimidated about this part. Because <laughs> I know from experience, the first time you look at this, it's like, oh man, are you kidding? Look at all those codes. Well, some of these codes you're going to be introduced to in this course. Some we're saving for future study. Some you may never even work with as far as these IS to IS codes go. Uh, that's for service providers. And if you don't work for a service provider, frankly, you may never even use IS to IS routes. But we're definitely interested in this connected type route right now because that's the only kind of route we have in here right now. And you can see there are the letters C. Always look over here for the code. And then, of course, for your exam, I would have a couple of these memorized, definitely C for connected. But you can see the two entries, no pun intended, see the entries that the router has. And it's got an entry for 10.1.1.0, directly connected off fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. And then the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network, it's directly connected to on the other side of the router on another fast Ethernet interface. So that's where we are right now. And that router gets those packets with a destination IP address of 10115. And it looks in its routing table, and it's going to look at all of its routes, and it's looking for the best match. 
and we will see scenarios here as we progress through the course where you have more routes to choose from and the router has several valid routes to pick from, but here it only has one. So the search for the best route is a pretty darn short one. It's 10.1.1.0 directly connected to fast ethernet zero slash one. So when the router receives those packets because it does have an entry for them, then it's gonna go straight through because when a router receives a packet, the destination fits one of these descriptions. It's either going to be a directly connected network like the two we just saw, it could have a non-directly connected network that the router has an entry for in its IP routing table. And then the one we have to be a little wary of, a non-directly connected network that the router has no entry for. That's the one we got to really watch out for. Now, in the case of the directly connected network that we just saw, this is exactly what would happen. It's a one, two, three step. The packets get sent by the host. And the host says, okay, these got to go to my default gateway at 192.168.11 because this destination is on another subnet. The router receives the packets on fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, and when it's processing them, looks in the routing table. Let's have another quick look at that. And it says, do I have a match for this? Period. And here's the match for the destination 10.1.1.0. There it is, directly connected fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. The router says, okay, I will now send these packets out zero slash one. Host C off the switch will receive them. So, hey, routing is simple, right? Well, when it comes to a directly connected route and that's all you have, then it's pretty simple. But the next walkthrough we're gonna do is this one, and I would definitely write this out because we've got host A over there connected to a switch, which in turn is connected to router one. You see the IP address is there. And you also see that we have another router, router 2, which has IP addresses that are slightly different. So we've got host B over there, 3115. We're going to do a quick walkthrough of this, also using our live router, and that is coming up next.